Hi, this is Tim Fairfield from Keysight Technologies. Um, today I'm going to be going over a question that I had come in um, uh, about using the M8070B software that's controlling the BERT, Bit Error Rate Tester. So this is the uh, setup that I'm using. This is the M8040 BERT Bit Error Rate Tester with the remote head. Um, this is cabled back into the error detector here. So I'm just doing a simple loop back. So that just gives us some context of the setup. Um, on the upper left here, I've got my Python environment. I'm using PyCharm for this. On the bottom right is the actual uh, software that runs on the M8070B. This is the controller software that would control the BERT that we just saw, the picture. And at the top, I'm using IO Monitor to monitor the traffic from the Python program going in. Um, that's uh, if you aren't aware of this it's very useful for debugging looking to see that your commands went through what did get formulated when it came through um, if you're running uh, IO libs uh, is this the one yeah I'm not sure there it is IO libraries here utilities uh, IO monitor that's where I'm getting that from so this will open it up you can start capturing messages and when we start uh, executing code the messages that go across um, the visa bus uh, the virtual bus, um, it will basically uh, be listed here and it will have timestamps and things like that. So it is useful. Um, so we are automating this software with uh, this Python code. This is running on a, I'm on a remote location and uh, my instruments are in another room. Um, and this is a VNC window. So I'm remoting into that as well. So let's get started. So let's just zoom this in. Let's look at the code first. Um, so again, again, it's demonstrating some of the features here. So the first thing I'm going to do is initialize the uh, instrument. Um, and we're going to do a sanity check by doing a, a query to see, make sure that we've got connected to the instrument. I'm going to set up some states and uh, kind of get the outputs running from the pattern generator just to get going. Um, so let's run this. And what we'll do is when this happens, when I execute this, I'm going to do it in debug mode. Um, so let's move this over so we can look at the console mode and debug. Can we do that? Yeah, let's go into console mode here. So here we go. So we've gotten as far as uh, uh, running a few of these commands. So let's see what happened. I uh, connected and attached the instrument, um, and then I sent the IDN query, which is right here. Let's see, we've got the IDN query. Um, ID and query. Let's just move these method calls because we don't care so much about what those are. Let's just squish these a little bit so it'll make it easy for the presentation here. And we see the program that called it is Python. If we wanted to know the timestamp, I'm not interested in that right now, but here we go. Now we get the IDN, IDN, data out, zero, uh, coupling, uh, global system on, new line. Um, and I'm also uh, printing this out to the window. When I did get the query, I print the IDN here. So that's how that works. Um, so I'm going to go further. So the next part of this is um, we are now looking at um, what I want to show you next is setting. Um, this is the shorthand method of changing the PRBS pattern. There are two ways within the GUI itself as a user to do this. Um, first of all, if I am uh, in the sequence editor, I can start the sequence editor. And I can go in here and manually set some things. And I have a ton of parameters, which uh, is very useful for some situations. Um, I can I have my generator side and my analyzer side. Um, and within here, I don't know why that's doing that. Let's just zoom out and see if we can grab that handle. There we go. Yeah, just because I'm on my zoom. Um, you can set the generator, all these parameters here. I'm not going to go through all these settings right now um, of what kind of pattern and block control you have. You can go in and change the block data um, uh, patterns, especially like that. Um, so you can have complex sequences with uh, looping and that sort of thing. When you use that, um, it'll generate an XML file, and then you have to go through a special method to call that. And then this whole XML has to be loaded. So for a, from a coding perspective, if you're not doing sequencing, this isn't the most efficient way to do things. Um, what you want to do is kind of emulate what this does. When we go select pattern, we can choose a PRBS pattern here, or we can choose a memory pattern, um, select it from here, and go, say, into the factory CEI uh, standard, and then the CEI stress bit, for instance. Um, we can go in and select that, and it'll load it in, um, and it'll load it into both uh, the generator and the analyzer automatically, um, or one 
just choose the generator or the analyzer as the source. So this part of the code does that. So essentially, using the shorthand method, all we have to do is um, I'm doing a query first to see data sequence set analyzer. Um, and I'm going to do a PRBS 2 to the 9. So all I have to do is call PRB, uh, the data set sequence, the analyzer, and then choose the, the pattern type and this here as well 2 to the 9 minus 1 now this is outlined in the latest uh, programmers reference manual that you can get online um, and again you can choose generator or analyzer so this code that I'm about to run will will set these and what we'll do is we'll monitor what's going on down in this bottom right so it was left at a at CEI stress bit from a, a pattern um, that was already previously loaded so let's step through this um, we're going to send the, uh, so right now uh, it was the CEI stress bit. We've just programmed the analyzer now to 2 to the 9 one. Now we're going to do the generator. So keep your eye down here. I'm going to click through here um, again. And now this is set um, down below to 2 to the 9 minus 1. So that's as easy as it is, a single line step. And then we can do a query to make sure it went and so forth. So now uh, the other thing is I'm demonstrating here is uh, loading up a specific um, name of a pattern. So if I want to do a memory pattern rather than a PRBS pattern, you use memory and then it's the relative uh, folder offset and the file name of which you want to load. So this can be, if I was to do this manually, let's go over this to patterns. Um, I could go select a pattern, go to memory, and in the folder structure, I would go in here, like I said, factory, CEI, um, and then choose stress bit. Let's pick SSPS, for instance, and we'll apply that. So now I've got the SSPS, and it's loaded to both of those. Um, but you see that it's it's relative to that. So if you had created your own patterns, you could go ahead and do that as well um, and select whichever pattern you want that's available from that structure. Okay. Um, now, the next one is line encoding setting. So... The line encoding, if I was to set one of these and change it um, in the GUI interface, uh, you will get a pop-up warning um, that, um, let's see, it gives you this pop-up and you have to confirm this and apply it, okay? So that both PGs have to be putting out the same type of pattern the way the memory architecture is, okay? Um, but uh, from a coding perspective, if I only set one of those, it allows me to set one only of coding pattern. The problem there is uh, you will get an error that pops up. You won't get the dialog, but you'll get some error down below uh, in the warnings box, and it won't actually change anything. So the proper way to do this is to do a compound statement on a skippy line. And the way a compound statement works is it's as if you did a single line uh, uh, command like this one up here, but then you separate it with a semicolon. Okay, um, so it's it's as simple as that. So uh, you do the first um, command uh, setting the pattern, and then we're going to do the same thing for the second pattern generator. And when you execute that, you won't run into any issues here. Um, you won't get the message. It'll work every time. So let's go execute this one. Um, I'm going to step through that. Uh, line encoding set. So now we've just switched it to PAM4. If we were to look at the other module as well, we would see it was set as PAM4. We didn't get any errors and we were able to move on. Okay, now here comes the interesting part. So another question that came up is, how do I wait so that PGs do take a little bit of time when you're loading, uh, changing, say, for instance, the clock rate? Um, there is a delay and um, you can't send, you should not execute any more commands uh, in the Visa bus until that is complete. And the OPC, Operation Complete Query, doesn't kind of cut the mustard on this one. Um, so we uh, have... A, uh, a query for each pattern generator and the analyzer that you can put in here. Uh, and there's two ways to do that. And the reason you want to do that is you don't want to issue any more commands. You may get a timeout error. You may overflow a buffer, something like that. And obviously, when you're automating, you don't want these things to happen. So the best practice is to do this. There's a command called, uh, there's a blocking command called stat inst run wait. There's a blocking version 
and I'll show you right after the non-blocking version where you have to do polling stat inst run and then query question mark so I'll show both examples but what I'll do when I run this is I'm going to uh, it's kind of doesn't really demonstrate this properly unless I uh, I'm in I'm in stop mode right now uh, running through so I've got actually what's going to happen is it's going to execute three different writes to the um, clock setting so 16 gig when I write to that it's going to take a number of seconds to complete that operation if we just started issuing these one after another we would run into problems now because we're doing the run wait it's going to the, the blocking statements will work no problem um, but we should not issue any more commands and this is how I've written the code is wait for this to come back um, and then move forward um, the next one uh, We'll we'll hit that as well, and the difference between run wait. We're going to go to the a stat ints run. So this is a polling type of method. So if I was to just do this once, I could go on and run my Python code. It doesn't stop my code from running. So I can go off and do other things and come back and check it. Is it ready yet? Is it ready yet? So that may be something you want to do. Depends on your situation, or you just may want to wait for it. So uh, based on that, you you can pick one of these commands. So. Uh, I am going to execute. So we ended here on the uh, PAM4. Uh, so now we're going, uh, I believe we're at that stage where we can run these. So what we're going to watch in this box is that we're not issuing any commands and we're waiting. Okay, so let's kick that one off. Uh, so it's setting the 16 gig clock and it's in the run wait state. If we go up here, it's actually waiting. Nothing else is being issued at this point. We're not proceeding with any code as well. Um, and the next statement we should see when it is done is it's going to print the return value that comes back. And we should see a return value come up here as well. So uh, let's wait for that. We also see the blue line. So in the software, there's this blue line that goes. And now we're, it's loaded. So OK, it's moved ahead. So we did a query on the data out one, the data out two, uh, and we did it on the uh, on the uh, M2 data in if we're using the onboard error detector if we're using that some cases times you don't need to do that you're not doing that um, but you see that it waits until this blue status bar and the busy is done and when it's done it'll pass um, um, the control back to the program and here we've done it again and we're waiting so after this we're going to end up at the non-blocking statement so this is all working just fine again it's waiting for the bar it's waiting for the command and uh, we haven't got an output here yet so that means that our code is not stuck we have not generated any errors and uh, it's just moving along as we expect again if you use an OPC here it's not going to work properly so this is the command you should use all right, we're at 29. Okay, now we're paused because I put a pause in the program. Or a, uh, so we are at this stage. So we're going to be running the no, the non-blocking version of this um, instead of oh using the polling method. Oh, I put a wait statement there. Why did I do that? Oh, okay. Uh, that's my bad. Oh, okay. Print error detector. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was doing an error detector statics. I was just doing a debug here, so um, we can ignore this for now. Um, but um, yeah, it's just something I was doing before. Anyway, uh, we'll hit that, and then the actual run command with the polling will be happening here. And I've got a little status bar that goes, and you'll see some activity in the program just to show we do have control within the program. So let's run that. Let's run that. So uh, let's continue. So the first thing is checking error detector status first. Okay, that's not always necessary. Um, so we'll wait till that's done in any case. Okay, so now we're uh, just started the status uh, instrument run command uh, data on it, and it will start polling any second. Uh, it's doing some internal process. Now we see we're polling above. We see uh, activity to the program. This is something I wrote here a little, and these are these are filling in as well. And when it gets to where it needs to be, it'll end in a one. So this is waiting and pulling. Uh, the blue line is not finished. It's still busy down here. Um, and we're waiting for that uh, to finish. There we go. Now we've moved on. We did receive a one, a valid one. And again, we have a while statement. While val equals zero, keep looping. And then anything else, we'll come back and we'll move on to the next block. So we've done that here. Um, we're waiting for this to happen over here and we are now the program now has control 
we are polling at this point. And if we look at the IO monitor, we are polling. So again, this will happen again. And we are done. Um, so that is it. Um, so uh, again, the review uh, of this is polling versus non-polling method. Going back up, uh, setting PAM4 or NRZ uh, line coding types, do them together. Um, going back up, the shorthand method for entering a pattern when you're not doing a complex sequence. If you're just doing a one, sto one level sequence, use this method. It's a heck of a lot easier. And um, yeah, that's it, the initialization. And yeah, take advantage of this uh, uh, IO Libraries uh, uh, window here. So if I go in here, I think I showed that already, Utilities, um, Connection Expert. You're just going to make sure when you when you run this, and I'll just give you a quick tip on this, um, make sure you've selected the block uh, for the instrument that you're going after, and then open up IO Monitor, okay? Um, and then we've already got it open, so it's right there. I could also open an interactive IO if you want to do a little debug there as well. So I could run a command in here, send and read, and we see that command coming from here. So I just don't want to code anything. I can actually go in there and do that. So hope that helps out. Um, and if you're interested in this code, just email me. Uh, I'll probably have a link somewhere uh, at some point, but if I don't, just uh, send me an email.